Okay, hi, I'm back and I'm talking about uh, starting Cocos 3D and lighting and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, adding shadows to your scene. So I've made a shadow scene and at the moment it's, uh, I'll just run it there, it's just the straightforward uh, lights pod and uh, shadow scene is there. We've got a static cube, a static sphere and the background container. Okay, and that's it. And if you were to look through the uh, CC3 mashup demo and uh, try to figure out um, shadowing, you might do it in this order. Uh, is how I'm going to approach this to show you. The first thing you might see is that there's a, a lamp shadow intensity factor. So you'd probably go and stick that in first. And I've done this when I'm showing you this, is uh, I've got comments there. One is uh, what I think is the first thing you might try to do. And three is the thing, the order that you probably should do it in when you're setting up shadows in your uh, project. So the first thing you might try to do is uh, the lamp shadow intensity factor. And the second thing you might do is you look at your cube and your sphere and you'd add shadow volumes for them. You might see things saying add shadow volumes for light. Uh, I have another thing called an icosphere. I'm going to talk about that uh, later, but this, these are the first uh, two we're going to use. And it would come up with an error, and the reason it would come up with an error is that up on top, the third thing you might try to do is import cc3shadowvolumes.h. Okay, and if you were to run it now, you'd be tearing your hair out because it still wouldn't work for you. And the reason that is, is that one big thing that you have to do at the very start, and I've put it down here as the fourth thing you might try to do, but the first thing you should do is go back to the app delegate and where it says uh, view controller view should use stencil buffer. This must be set to yes. And there's a note there to tell you set yes if using shadow volumes, but it tends to get missed by people. So once you've done that, now we should get uh, back in the shadow scene, we should be able to get shadows on my uh, cube and on my sphere. So I'll just run it. And shadow scene. And there you go, you got a shadow for both of them. Just watch there now, I've actually got an action inside and you can see that the lamp is actually moving, but the shadows aren't moving, okay? So that's the next thing we need to figure out. So if you go back and close that down. What you would do if you've got static objects like that, the cube and the sphere, you go into the um, update before transform. And in that, I'll uncomment these guys. Uh, the first thing is you've already put in a shadow volume on the cube, so you have to remove it uh, for the update. And the same for the sphere, you remove the shadow volume. And then immediately in the update transform, you add a shadow volume for the the different objects. So you've got remove for the cube, remove for the sphere, and add for the cube, add for the sphere for that particular light that we're using. And if you're looking through the mesh up demo, you'll see that this is done in a kind of a for loop because there's so many objects. And um, Bill just runs through a kind of a loop of selecting whichever node you want to get the shadows from and add, removes them first of all and adds them as the update loop, loop uh, goes through. So if you run this now, you should see that when the light moves across, that the, uh, the shadows should move across as well. So there you are, it's steady, the light is steady, you can see it on the sphere there, but now it's starting to move over, and you can see the shadows are moving over and they paint nicely up onto the wall and everything like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. If you have um, objects that move, what I'm gonna do is go back again, and come with these guys back out again. There we go. So we should, we're back to static now and if the light moves they won't uh, they won't update the shadows. But if you put an action on the object, so I'm going to go down here and in the unopen method I've got uh, an orbit action that I'm going to stick on the cube. Why is it called split cube? I must have been doing something else there, it's just cube. Uh, the cube and on the sphere I'm going to put a kind of a phony bounce action and that's the lamp action, 
lamp action that's been running that's a three second delay and it moves across uh, for five seconds so now remember we don't have the updates uh, on the cube and the sphere but we do have an action running and you'll see that hopefully you'll see that when I run the shadow scene now because they actually have an action running on them when the light moves across as it is doing now you can see that the shadows are actually being updated because part of the action thing is obviously updating the vertices uh, for the shadow okay so a static object you need to update it but one that's got an action on it yeah you, it'll do that and you can avoid uh, calling updates all the time okay so that's that bit done and finally actually second finally might even be third finally um well, another thing you can do to save um processing is uh, i went into blender and i've actually if you look at the sphere there the sphere has uh, 482 faces in edit mode but I've also added in that position uh, an icosphere, it's called, exactly in the same position as the sphere. And if you look at that in edit mode, and I'll just hide the sphere so you can see it, hide and edit mode, the icosphere only has 42 vertices. So in terms of calculating the shadow volume of something with 42 uh, vertices rather than 482, it takes far less out of the, uh, the program and enhances your performance. So I've uh, added the icosphere into the pod and I've saved the pod as the lights three pod and uh, that's added to the resources and now inside in the shadow scene what I've been using all along here is this uh, lights three pod and the reason you haven't seen the icosphere so far is that uh, it's put in as invisible. So the icosphere is there, I resonos get the icosphere, uh, visible is no, and it has this important line here, should cast shadows when invisible equals to yes. And then I've made the icosphere location equal to the sphere location. Uh, you might even be able to parent it, I don't think of that. Uh, so now instead of adding shadow volumes to the sphere, I'm going to add shadow volumes to the icosphere. And down in the updates, I'm going to keep updating the icosphere location to be equal to the sphere location. Um, I may have to update the shadow volumes. I'll check that now. We'll, we'll run it without doing that first. And uh, that's about it. Then the actual the sphere will bounce up and down. The icosphere will go with it. And any shadows we see now are going to be coming from the icosphere. And we, we should be able to see the difference uh, in the scene hopefully so here we go shadow scene bouncing up and down and you can see now you have the icosphere's shadow which is much cheaper than the sphere shadow but it's giving you you know a good approximation to what a sphere uh, shadow would look like and there, there's no calculation of this sphere shadow to slow things down okay so that's a performance saving tip and the uh, second last thing I want to say is, oh yeah, shadow intensity factor. Uh, instead of 7.75, if you put it down to 0.25, it just makes it a bit lighter. That's all that's about. One makes it uh, full kind of a dark, but uh, you play around with that to see which one. See the light, a bit of a lighter shadow effect there because of that. And finally, um, the way I've set up this project, I've added the shadow volumes to the objects in the initialization scene method. Sometimes you might be adding the shadow volumes after that, uh, during the scene, uh, adding it dynamically, as it would be said. So the way, if you were to do that now, let's say I just go with the, uh, okay, the update method. We'll just have the cube with the shadow volumes. And uh, we'll have the icosphere with the shadow volumes. Uh, they'll be added, uh, taken off and added in the update method. That might cause a problem at the start. I'll just see anyway. Um, in fact, what I should do, now that I think of it, is add them. I'll take this line here completely, cut it out of there, and I put it into the on open method. Okay. So now it's kind of been added after the scene has opened. And if I'm to run this now, I think I should get the appropriate error. It should demonstrate what you need to do. Uh, shadow scene, and bam, we get an error. 
And the reason we get an error is because it says it down here, uh, vertex contact is no longer in available application memory. And it even tells you what to do. You have to invoke the retain vertex content uh, on this before releasing the content. Okay, so the way to fix that is if you are in this situation and you're adding your shadows dynamically, uh, which is kind of what this is doing, you have to add these lines here for each of the um, objects that you're going to hold on to the shadows for. Uh, we don't need it for the sphere one, but we do need it for the icosphere. And what you're doing is you're retaining vertex context, content, retaining vertex indices, and that means that they're stored in the the, render, the accessible memory as the scene updates. And hopefully now when I play this, you should be able to see that it doesn't crash and we do have shadows available. Okay. Isn't that cool? Okay, so that's the end of the uh, shadow scene video. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next, but it's going to be amazing. Bye.